Hello everyone. I welcome you on board flight of Captain Vijay in the series of flights to study meteorology for DGCA CPL and ATPL examination. Today we will fly through the topic of global pressure pattern which also dictates the wind pattern on global scale. Basics covered in this video will also help you in better understanding of the next video lesson on upper winds and jet streams. So fasten your seat belts as we are ready for take off. To understand global pressure pattern, we need to revise or revisit some fundamentals related to geography of earth, which as such is an interesting subject and will definitely help us in deeper understanding of the topic. So without waiting any further, let us revise them. Earth is a spherical planet which rotates on its axis once in 24 hours and goes around the sun in an elliptical orbit in 365 days or one year. The two ends of its axis of rotation is called North and South Pole and the imaginary line dividing the earth in two equal halves is called equator, which is at equal distance from both poles and to be precise, it is 10,000 kilometers. The axis of rotation of earth is not at 90 degree to the plane of rotation around the sun but it is tilted by 23.5 degrees to one side. And this tilt of earth axis from vertical is responsible for different seasons and climate change as the earth goes around the sun in one year cycle. This tilt gives rise to six month long day and six, six month long night over north and south poles. And this tilt makes the longest day on 21st June longest night on 22nd December in Northern Hemisphere. On 21st March and 23rd September, we have equal length of day and night over the entire planet, which is also called equinox, since the tilt angle on these dates is non-effective. Because of Earth tilt angle, Earth gets some more fancy lines on its surface other than equator and let us dis discuss them one by one. First is Tropic of Cancer. An imaginary line 23.5 degree north and parallel to equator. On 21st June every year the sun will be directly over this line, hence the longest day in northern hemisphere. Tropic of Capricorn. An imaginary line 23.5 degree south and parallel to equator. On 22nd December, sun will be directly over this line. So the longest night in Northern Hemisphere or longest day in Southern Hemisphere. On 21st March and 23rd September, the sun will be directly over equator. So equal length of day and night will be there on entire planet. Arctic Circle, imaginary line at 66.5 degree north and parallel to equator. And Antarctic Circle, is imaginary line at 66.5 degrees south and parallel to equator. Areas above Arctic Circle and below Antarctic Circle will have extremely long days in summer and extremely long nights in winter. And finally at North and South Poles, the day will be 6 month long and the night will be also be 6 month long. We have studied in previous videos that the earth atmosphere does not get heated directly from sun. Sun heats the earth's surface, which is called insulation, and earth heats the atmosphere. So atmospheric heating will be maximum where the solar energy is maximum. Is that place equator? Well, not always so. Sun is directly above equator only in March and September. In June, it is over tro Tropic of Cancer and in December, it is over Tropic of Capricorn. Hence, the point of maximum heating on Earth keep changing with passing months throughout the year. But it is always within plus minus 23.5 degree of equator. So, the thermal equator keeps shifting in between these two lines during the entire year. And this belt is called tropics or tropical belt. The areas beyond 23.5 degree north or south is called subtropical belt or temperate latitudes. Areas beyond 66.5 degree north or south is called polar zones. 
maximum heating of earth takes place between 23.5 degree north to 23.5 degree south understanding atmospheric pressure this is very important what happens to atmospheric pressure when air is heated or when air gets colder you need to understand it very well if volume of the air is constant then pressure of air increases when it is heated so hot air more molecular motion means more pressure but provided the volume remains constant and air does not escape on the other hand cold air less molecular motion and less pressure so to summarize cold air low pressure and hot air means high pressure but while studying meteorology sometime you'll come across a situation when air gets heated and a low pressure area is created why why hot air should produce high pressure zone why low pressure area is created in a heated zone the answer to this is that the air in atmosphere is not contained in a glass or bottle it is free to move so when air in contact with earth gets heated up it expands it becomes lighter than the surrounding and it rises up this rise of air to higher height creates a vacuum at the lower region thus creating a low pressure area this has happened since air has escaped upwards this is a dichotomy that on one hand we are saying that if we heat up the air the pressure increases and on the other hand we are saying that the heating creates a low pressure zone so hope now you have understood the explanation for this dichotomy understanding wind direction wind always blow from high pressure to low pressure area but deflected to the right in northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere under the influence of coriolis force the stronger the wind speed the stronger will be coriolis force and more it will curve to the right or left looking at the pressure pattern on the global scale one would think that the wind must blow from either north or south but actually all the wind direction of the globe is either westerly or easterly this is due to the curving of winds under the influence of coriolis force now let us discuss what is the global pressure pattern on planet earth on the screen you can see a generic global pressure pattern for month of march or september when sun is exactly over equator equator gets maximum heating and highest temperature is over equator air gets heated up gets lighter and rises upwards so a low pressure area is created along the equator at lower levels so at this point of time you can recall my explanation which i gave you for heating of air causing low pressure area so the air rises to tropopause then travels horizontally towards 23.5 degree north or south line where it descends down to the surface level descending air at 23.5 degree north or south creates a high pressure area at surface level so there is a high pressure at 23.5 degree north and south and low pressure at equator so wind blows towards the equator under the influence of coriolis force it curves to the right in northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere and finally you get northeasterly wind north of equator and southeasterly wind south of equator so these easterly winds are also called trade winds christopher columbus discovered the trade winds in 9 in 1492 these winds carried his three sailing vessels across the atlantic from the canary islands to the bahamas a distance of 5400 miles in just 36 days in earlier times when steam engine was not invented sailors used to make use of trade winds to travel large distances across oceans for trade now let us discuss two more term here and that is doldrums and itcz first doldrums the area where the trade winds that is easterlies from north and south hemisphere meet is an area of calm winds with small pressure gradient and that is called doldrums sailors used to fear this area since the sails used to get stuck for days due to absence of winds this area is also called itcz 
which stands for intertropical convergence zone as the name suggests wind from both sides are converging along itcz the position of itcz moves along with the movement of thermal equator throughout the year itcz is a belt which is approximately 80 to 300 km wide of low pressure area encircling the entire earth near the thermal equator since heating is maximum here this belt is characterized by dense clouding thunderstorm rain high humidity thick and dense forest and hot and humid weather now we will move upwards towards subtropical latitudes you see at 23 decimal 5 degree north and south there is a high pressure area and at 66 decimal 5 degree north and south there is a low pressure area so wind blows from high to low pressure area and curves under the influence of coriolis force so we get westerly winds in subtropical latitudes but at approximately 30 degree north and south again there is a problem for the sailing ships along this line wind is going out on both sides hence the sailors will have a very tough time in sailing their ships in absence of winds these latitudes are characterized by calm winds clear skies little precipitation and they are called horse latitudes the horse latitude are the areas between 30 and 35 degree north and similarly between 30 and 35 degree south latitude this term horse latitude comes from the practice of sailors throwing horses overboard to conserve water when their ships were trapped in a high pressure belt another term which is relevant in these latitude is roaring 40s as you see westerly winds in the northern hemisphere is obstructed by large amount of land mass but in southern hemisphere we have a continuous ocean belt so winds pick up a very high speed up to a gale force speed between 40 and 50 degree south latitude and these are called roaring 40s the last pressure pattern is a high pressure area over the poles since air comes down at both the poles and create a high pressure zone so wind blows from poles towards low pressure area which is over 66 decimal 5 degree latitude and as usually it curves under the influence of coriolis force and we get another set of easterly winds so winds are easterly near equator and poles and westerly in subtropical areas of the planet so that completes all the pressure pattern over the entire globe at lower levels in the next video we will discuss the pressure pattern at upper levels of the atmosphere as well as jet streams so hope this video has helped you in understanding the topic of global pressure pattern and global wind pattern at lower levels with this we have arrived at our destination subscribe the channel for more such informative videos on aviation do not forget to comment below about how did you like the video or if you want me to cover some specific topic hope to see you on board again for the next flight and till then happy landings